now. I should, there we go, there's Duna and Ike. Uh, I'll set this as a target so we know where the planet is. What I should be able to do also is bring our periapsis down more, which will help a lot. Uh, so, what I want to do is burn uh, between the planet and uh, the opposite direction of where we're going. So right here, the planet's going to be down that way. So you see our periapsis is falling there, and we are also slowing down, which both of those combined should make for an orbit eventually. All right, see there, our periapsis is getting way down. And we'll bring that in closer. We can leave it at around a million for now, but we're almost to an orbit, almost, I think. All right, uh, so now we have basically got it uh, to where we want to be burning straight back, I think, and this should loop around and create an orbit. Um, what I'm going to do is the opposite direction should be up here, the opposite direction of where we're going, and I'm going to burn again uh, in that opposite direction to hopefully create an orbit. Um, and once we get down closer to our periapsis, I'll do another burn, which should help a lot in creating that orbit. So I'll make sure we've got plenty of fuel left, because I have a whole nother stage after this. Uh, so we were good on fuel. We could have maybe made it even farther out than Duna, but we'll save that for later. We don't need to worry about that now. And we should be slowed down close to enough soon. Alright, uh, whoop, that's not what we want. We don't want an encounter with Duna's moon. There we go. Alright, so our periapsis is right around a million. Let's get it down to a million and a half. And then we'll uh, speed up time till we get there. And once we get there, then uh, we'll do another burn that should complete our orbit. Then we can bring our orbit down uh, to close enough to observe the planet and see what it's all about. So let's see, there's Duna right there getting closer and closer. And this is our first satellite we've sent here, so we don't know anything about the planet. The Kerbals don't, other than that it's there, basically. All right. So right there, we're close to our periapsis. And we can see it is a red planet with what look to be polar ice caps. So, now, we gotta, we got to adjust ourselves here. Oh, there we go, that burn did it. I turned it on a little bit and that has brought us into an orbit which is coming down very nicely and let's see here let's bring our orbit down a bunch and then we'll be good uh, I don't want Ike as a target anymore I don't want to go there we want to orbit Duna all right, our orbit's at, I'm going to bring it down under a million. So this is going to be a close orbit. Let's 
bring it down to around 500,000, let's say. That should be good. Right there. And then, uh, we will, let's wait till we get to our periapsis. And once we do, uh, then we can do another burn just to bring our apoapsis down. And so now we are doing very well. Uh, we are well within uh, within the orbit of Ike, the moon. All right, and now let's speed this up a bit. You don't want to speed it up too much because you don't want to miss it. Although I guess missing it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world because we could just go around again. But uh, I'll just get it on this try here. All right, so there is a really good look at the planet. Uh, obviously, those of you who know anything about planets at all can figure out what this planet represents. Uh, one planet farther out than us, red, polar ice caps. Any guesses? That's right, it is Mars. But, in uh, this solar system, it is called Duna. So that's how I will be referring to it, unless I slip up and call it the wrong name, which may happen. Alright, so I did that little burn there, uh, just to get this moving, because you need to burn a little bit for uh, your um, control of the ship, basically. Alright. So now we're bringing down our apoapsis. Alright, we'll bring that down to under a million. And our periapsis is also coming down. We could bring that down, let's say, close to uh, 200,000 or so. Three hundred thousand. Yeah, we can go a little lower. Um. All right. So, this whole thing is still orbiting the planet, actually, and that's not what I wanted. What I wanted was just the final stage to be orbiting, which is our satellite. So what I could actually do, uh, since I have enough fuel, is I could crash this stage into the planet, and then I, like set it on a course to crash, then separate, and uh, that'll go crash into Duna so there won't be any useless debris orbiting it. And then, uh, that would leave our satellite as the only thing orbiting. And actually, uh, this satellite, I was prepared to detach a full another stage yet. So, you know, I'm going to do that. I'm going to crash this stage into Duna. We'll, we'll go like this because what that test will show us is if Duna has an atmosphere, uh, this will crash. If it doesn't, then it won't. All right, so we need to stop rotating here, though. And we want to stop rotating in this direction up here so that we're going the way we're going to need to burn. Uh, Alright. Well, this is... this is annoying how we're spinning like this. Um,
All right. So we're where it'll show us if it has an atmosphere. So I'm going to try to stop this spin somehow, which could take a little while. So I'll bring you guys right back before we separate stages. Okay, uh, so I've got the spin stopped. And now we're going to aim in this direction here. And we've got it where uh, we can detach. And if Duna has an atmosphere, then this stage will be slowed down and the periapsis will drop and it will crash into Duna. If Duna doesn't have an atmosphere, then it'll continue to orbit, but then we'll at least know that. So, what I'm going to do is detach this stage and then throttle up, bringing our final stage out, and then increase its periapsis enough where it won't crash get it up to around 80,000, 85,000. Uh, we'll go 100, 100,000 just to be safe because I don't know how big an atmosphere Duna would have if it had one. So now we can uh, see our satellite here orbiting. I was prepared to detach another stage yet and just have this top part orbiting but we don't need to do that we might as well save our fuel so what I'm gonna do is speed up time here and we will learn as much as we can here about Duna let's see if it has an atmosphere by watching this debris if the debris crashes then we know Duna has an atmosphere, which means we could use parachutes to land on it if in the future we were ever going to send a rover or even maybe a person to Duna. So let's watch the debris, and it crashed. That's what we want. That means that yes, it has an atmosphere. And so now we can leave our satellite here orbiting Duna. Uh, and we'll just make sure and so at a hundred thousand meters we are safe we didn't enter Duna's atmosphere so we know that uh, we're safe as long as we orbit things at at least a hundred thousand meters so we're learning a lot about Duna here in this uh, experiment and let's take a look it's covered in craters no signs of life that's the big thing. There is no visible signs of life, at least, and no signs of liquid water, which probably means no life, uh, or at least advanced life. But these do look like they could be dried up ocean beds, possibly, or, yeah, giant ocean beds, or just weirdly shaped craters, but I don't know about that. It looks like ocean oceans that are dried up and there is ice at the caps so we know that uh, there was water or there's frozen water that could have at one point been liquid but uh, that's all we know so far we're gonna orbit another time or two around just to get a good look at the planet and see if there's anything else we can learn from this experiment and then uh, we will deploy uh, a little thing I've added to our satellites, which you'll see in a second. Uh, around the dark side, we can't really see much, so I'll just go quickly through the dark side here of Duna. And we're getting down close to 100,000 meters, but we don't enter the atmosphere, so we're fine. Um, all right. The planet looks like it's pretty rocky, not a ton of flat areas. Although, if we landed in the bottom of one of those craters or what I'm going to call dried up ocean bed things, I'm sure we could land something there fairly safely. Alright, now for the thing I was talking about. We'll turn our satellite a little bit so that it's facing this way so you can see it better then 
uh, I am going to show you guys what I've added versus the uh, just the Kerbnik satellites, what I've added to the deep space ones. Alright, here we go. Right there. That's right, this has solar panels which will extend and turn to face the sun, meaning our satellite will have enough electric charge to last forever. And that right there, that must be Ike, the moon of Duna. Uh, we could eventually go on a mission to orbit Ike and see what it's all about. Uh, but for now, we're going to leave the Kerbnik Deep Space One in orbit around Duna. And then... Uh, we will head back and prepare for our next mission pretty soon. We're just going to do one or two more rotations for good measure just to see everything that we can see and then we'll head back. So I'll we'll orbit around a couple more times and we'll watch the sun rise over uh, the horizon here of Duna alright that'll be good we'll finish up this mission right here with this view the first time we've put anything in orbit around another planet so this is a big day for the Kerbal Space Program and a huge step forward and the other thing we learned is Duna does have an atmosphere so we could potentially land something on it with parachutes so that's big and we will keep that in mind. So I'm going to head back now and prepare for the next mission. We'll figure out what that, uh, what that is later. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you next time.